Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. This is Yvette Hampton. I am your host, and I am so glad that you're with us again today. Um, I am so much enjoying this podcast. I hope that you can hear that when I interview people. It, it's such an encouragement to me to sit with these people that God has brought to us for the podcast, and I get to learn their stories. I get to get advice from them and just glean wisdom from them, and God is doing amazing things across the world, um, but really in this country in regards to, to homeschooling and the lives that he's changing and the impact that he's having in families through homeschooling has been incredible. And so we get to see that firsthand. And I love that I get to share that with you. So thank you for joining me today. Um, if you have not left a review for the podcast on iTunes, I would love it if you would do that. I don't ask you to do that to, to puff us up in any way, but because it really helps people to find us. It helps them to know what the podcast is all about. And it just directs people towards Schoolhouse Rock, towards our website, towards the documentary, everything that we're doing to be a blessing to the homeschool community. So I would love it if you would share it with your friends, leave a re, uh, review on iTunes and um, just help us out that way. The other thing is um, I would love for you to just be praying for us as we are working through production on the movie right now. There is just so much to be done, and we are only getting this done by the grace of God. It is not anything that we could do on our own. God is moving mountains, literally, to get this movie done, and it's been a really, really exciting journey for our family, but we definitely need prayer. Um, so if you would just join us in praying for us as we continue forward with post-production and trying to get the movie done, that would be great. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time and you have no idea what I'm talking about, go to schoolhouserocked.com and you can see the movie trailers there. We're in the process of producing a documentary on homeschooling. And so it's been very exciting to do that. We would love for you to join us and just be encouraged by what God is doing. Um, but I am super excited that you've joined us again for the podcast because I have a great guest on today that I know you are going to be just super blessed by. His name is Stephen Policastro. And he is the founder and COO of the International Association for Creation. So that's a, a mouthful. <laughs> but I'm going to introduce him to you, let him tell you a little bit about who he is, what he's doing, and just the amazing ministry that he has. So Stephen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Yvette, for having me on today. I really appreciate it. And I am so amazed and blessed to see everything that God is doing through you and your family and your crew at Schoolhouse Rock. So thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out of your life to answer this call and yeah. see it come to fruition. It's really exciting. Um, so for myself, uh, like Yvette said, my name is Stephen Polycaster and I'm with the International Association for Creation. Uh, we started back in 2012 uh, just praying for one person that visited our church. Uh, from Washington State, and I'm in Florida, so that's all the way across the continent. And she had learned that I was interested in creation science and had said, oh, well, can you pray for the directors of the museum I work in? I was like, sure, why not? So my friend Zach and I, we started to pray, and a few of the others from church, and they started seeing their prayers get answered. And so they gave my information to their museum friends and they would call and ask for prayer. And I was like, yeah, we can pray for you too. And after about five people ended up calling, I was like, well, God, what are you doing here? <laughs> and the Lord laid it upon my heart to put a list together so they could just be praying for each other. Mm. Uh, it's been what, seven years now. Um, and the Lord has opened up all the right doors and given us all the strength in our weakness that we'd be able to walk through his doors and see him do amazing things all across the earth. So it's just amazing to have access to God through Christ and be able to like, as we say in the office, take a peek behind the veil and see what God's doing, you know, in every corner of the world. I oh, love it. Um, so you, you are, not yet a homeschool dad. You are a homeschool dad in training. <laughs> yes. But you actually have a pretty neat testimony in regards to homeschooling. Can you share that with us? Yeah, definitely. So uh, growing up, I've grown up in the church my whole life. Um, since I was four, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that he created the earth in six days. Uh, I had no reason to doubt that. Um, but I got caught up in legalism um, and it wasn't until 15 that my head knowledge became heart knowledge and God stepped down to save me. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, through that time, 
uh, in Florida that it's popular to like go to day school and be homeschooled in the afternoon. So that's what my parents decided to do. Um, and I'm really thankful for that opportunity. Uh, once graduating from school, um, I went off to college and I got more involved in homeschooling. Um, I've been a speaker and a conference coordinator at Finish Well Homeschool Conference in Orlando, Florida. Um, I've taught at our church's co-op biblical review classes. Um, I've also worked with homeschool dads across the nation at Homeschool Dad Media. Um, and as you said, I'm just a homeschool dad in training, uh, but I want to encourage all the other guys who are single or maybe don't have kids yet. Um, you know, it's never too early to start, and it's such a joy to be part of this community and help raise up kids in the way they're supposed to go so they won't depart from their faith and that they would really fall in love with Jesus. Like that's what homeschooling is about yeah. is that we would point them to Jesus and they would fall in love with him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that is absolutely the truth. We've talked about that a whole lot on the podcast and uh, academics are important as long as they are always pointing our kids to their creator. Yeah. And you are so good at helping families, homeschool families, to be able to do that and pointing their kids to the creator. And one of the ways that you do that is through museums. And so I want to talk about museums today. We've actually not tackled this topic on the podcast yet. And I love this topic. We are a family who um, really enjoys museums and we do them differently. Um, and when I say we do them differently, I mean, Garrett and I do them differently because we go to a museum and Garrett will read literally every single plaque, every detail of everything. Um, and then he remembers it. And I look wow. at all the pretty things and I continue walking on because I'm not going to remember most of the details anyway. Right. So I just continue walking, but I love museums. And um, where our 13 year old is um, especially into art museums right now because she Great a great artist. And so she mm. is really enjoying going to art museums. Um, awesome. But I would love for you to talk about uh, using museums in our homeschooling and how we can do that. Uh, I, there are so many secular museums and I know that's been a big thing for us. I mean, you've of course got the Creation Museum, which yeah. is amazing and the Ark Encounter yeah, and, and really uh, several Creation Museums actually around the country. Um, and so those ones are, are easy and we can talk about that too. Those are easy to go in and you see the evidence of our amazing creator, but there are also a lot of aquariums and secular museums around that can be very beneficial. And so can you talk about how we can use those in our homeschooling to lead our kids towards Christ? Yeah, definitely. So um, research shows time and time and time again that the best way for kids to learn is to do it hands-on. And so that's something we're really excited about is to provide hands-on opportunities and lots of resources for uh, just-in-time learning um, that kids and parents alike can learn about who God is and what he's doing through his creation. Um, as it says in Romans that God's creation declares his glory. And so <laughs> honestly, it's as simple as stepping outside in your own backyard mm -hmm. and you're saying like, wow, God, like look at the beautiful sunrise or look at that ant. Like, and how strong it is. Yes. Um, and being in Florida, in our backyard, we've got ocean all around us. And so mm -hmm. it's easy to jump in the water and, like, go down and see the fish and all the amazing colors that God created. Some of them that aren't on land. Um, and, like, an example is uh, the, the clownfish going to the sea in me or just any fish going to a rock. And it's, like, that reminds us, like, yeah, like, that scripture verse where it says God is our rock. Like, this is what God put on the earth to remind us of that passage. And so like that, like all parts of creation point to God and his word and his perfection, even though like all of creation is under the curse and we're all marred by sin, uh, but it's pointing us to an eternal hope um, and one that can only be found in Christ. So using museums to that end and to pointing our kids to that eternal hope, who is Jesus Christ is so important. And a lot of people come to us and ask, you know, I don't have a museum nearby that's creation oriented. Um, so what do I do? And we tell them to go to their local museum or aquarium or zoo, um, even though it's secular, like we believe that God owns everything. He created everything. So he owns it. Right. And just because someone who doesn't believe in God and is against his will and his agenda, um, you know, might try to persuade you otherwise, like 
all the stuff in your local secular museum, aquarium, zoo, even in the national park is God's. And because it's God's, it's also ours because we're his children and we inherit what he has. Um, and that's just an amazing and beautiful truth that like we get to walk in the authority and the wisdom of God and share that with other people and show like how these things, um, even if maybe they have evolutionary teaching like on the mm -hmm. plaque or um, they're not showing the full truth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can still show the full truth through looking at God's world through the lens of God's word because mm -hmm. all truth does truly start with the written word of God because its foundation is on the person of Jesus Christ and the, the Trinity, honestly. So that's where we pull all of our source from. Um, and so it's really important when you go into museums and when you're homeschooling to realize that like as your foundation, your presupposition, if you will, that everything derives itself, all law, all reality from the word of God, all science. Um, and it just is depending on how you interpret it. So, you know, a lot of people interpret billions of years old and then there's a lot of us who interpret it as the Bible literally says that God created in six days and when you calculate everything out, it works out to about 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. So going in the museum with that mindset and preparing a child with that mindset also um, and showing them like, yeah, there are people who don't believe in God's word. And like, you know, here are the consequences. Like there are consequences to not believing in God's word and sin, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and we've all felt sin's effects. So we can all personally relate to that and personally go into our children and say, hey, like, you know, whether they're three years old or a teenager, like we can talk about sin and it's not a bad thing to do. It's actually really important because without our understanding of what sin is and really like what happened in the garden of Eden, literally mm -hmm. with Adam and Eve, then we can't truly understand our deep need for Jesus Christ. Like that intimacy with God, the closeness we need with God and the, the younger you are at knowing that, like the better off your life is going to be because you're going to be walking with God and, you know, close for a longer period of time. And life not, might not be easy because Jesus doesn't promise us an easy life, but he does promise us a full life. And that full life is full of him and all the things that he offers us. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I, um, I'm one who actually... I think it's really good sometimes for us, you know, obviously we want to um, go to the creation museums and those that teach truth, but I think it also can be a really good thing to go to museums that are teaching evolution because it helps our kids to see the other side of it. Right. Um, I think oftentimes there are, and you talked about legalism before, you know, oftentimes we as homeschoolers can get so legalistic and no, we don't want our kids to be exposed to anything of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, what better time for them to be exposed to something like evolution when they're under the care of our umbrella and our, our biblical covering where we can say, right. this is what the world believes, but what does God's word say? Yes. And it's a great opportunity for us to take them to the word of God and, and say, let's, let's study this. Let's look this up. Let's see what God says about it. You know, Psalm 19, one says the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies mm -hmm. proclaim the work of his hands. He is a faithful God that has, has created a universe that we can look at it and we can just be in awe. I mean, no one can look at the universe and not be in awe of the creation of the universe. Now, not everybody understands that there's a creator or wants to believe that there's a creator behind it, but you cannot look at the universe and be like, yeah, well, it's cool. There's a couple of stars, a couple of galaxies and, you know, some planets and stuff. No one can do that. You look at an eclipse and you just think, wow. I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. The whole world stops. Yeah. Because it declares the glory of a fantastic creator. And so I think that it can open up amazing opportunities for us to be able to draw our kids' hearts towards Christ mm -hmm. and exposing them to those things while we're with them. Because, you know, you've seen it happen. I'm sure we've seen it happen where oftentimes kids are raised in a Christian home. They're only taught one side of it. Right. And then they go off to college. And if they go off to a secular college or sometimes, unfortunately, even Christian colleges or so-called Christian colleges are teaching things that are contrary to the word of God. And right. so then kids go off into these universities and their professor is telling them something 
contrary to what their parents have taught them and their parents have not equipped them to be able to stand firm on what they know to be truth. And so then they're completely derailed and they're like, oh, well, shoot, my college professor who knows everything obviously is saying that evolution is how we got here. Yeah. And so I think it opens up great opportunities for us to be able to train the hearts of our kids. Um, what are some practical ways that you could do that? You know, just let's say you're, you're walking into a museum mm -hmm. with a group of kids and yeah. it's a secular museum. What are some ways that you would help direct them and help guide them through that journey, through that museum? Yeah, definitely. So when I've taken in homeschool groups or like some of my family who has little kids like through these locations uh, things that have worked really well um, personally and practically would be just asking the kids simple questions honestly so asking them, like does this look designed like does this look like it was created by an artist you know because they all know what an artist is sure. and so if you ask them like does this look like someone drew it or someone you know molded it and they can tell you, yeah, it does. And they can talk about that. Um, you can ask them, maybe you're standing in front of like an ape, like human transitional uh, mm -hmm. exhibit at a secular location. And you can ask them, so what are the similarities and what are the differences between these two uh, cre creatures? So humans versus apes. And they'll be able to tell you like, well, the human doesn't have as much hair. Like it's standing upright, it's taller. You know, it looks like me, but the ape doesn't. And so those are like two really practical things that you can, uh, you know, help your kids engage as they go to the museum. Of course, they're going to be like, wow, look at that. <laughs> look at that huge dinosaur. Um, so my nephew, he goes and he's like, wow, look at that big alligator. And it's like, no, 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 that's not an alligator. <laughs> that is a dinosaur. <laughs> but uh you know, and, and they need guidance, you know, like kids mm -hmm. are a sponge and they want to learn. And like you were saying, like, what a perfect time to like help their hearts be molded for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we believe, you know, like using museums and zoos and aquariums and national parks and all these things, whether you're visiting one of our 40 locations across the country, or maybe you're going to the Creation Museum or Ark Encounter in Kentucky, or if you are just staying in your community. You're going mm -hmm. to your local secular location. Like these are all places that you can point your child to Christ, even in your own backyard. Yeah, love it. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break um, to hear from one of our sponsors and then we will be right back and we're gonna continue right. talking about this. And I'm gonna take a water break. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take one also. <laughs> Mouth gets so dry with, I, know. I don't know why I'm not talking all that much, but um, so I've got my, my water cup here that I'm not allowed awesome. to put ice in because the ice will make too much noise. <laughs> yeah. <But> it's okay. <laughs> um, all right. So what's our next topic? So um, let's talk about, um, let me see. Hold on just a second. Yeah. I, I want to actually talk about some specific museums. Okay. Um, throughout the country and can you give some suggestions on some just some of your favorite maybe museums and aquariums and and things like that that people can visit yes are you asking for like ones within our network or uh sure either or both? okay all right yeah, yeah. yeah i can do that cool okay all right hold on one second okay and then oh. no go ahead oh and then we can also like tie that in maybe to the app or something Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I can Let's give like, all right, because I can give like a real example of how. Yes. Let's means. talk about that. Right, cool. Okay. All right. Okay. And we are back. <laughs> I love saying it like that. It sounds so radio show host. Um, but we are back with Stephen Policastro. No. Pal how do you say it? Polycastro. Polycastro. Okay, say it with the Italian accent. Polycastro. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I will not attempt to, to do that. Um, I want to continue talking about museums and visiting them. And I know you've got a network of museums, and then you have just maybe some of your favorites that are around the country. Yeah. Um, you're in Florida, but yes. obviously people who listen to this are all over the country. What are some of your favorite museums that you love going to that you would recommend people to go to? And then I know you've got a, an app 
that you have designed. And so I want you to talk about that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. So in my travels, I would say um, my favorite locations would probably be the Carnegie Natural History Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. That one is amazing. Um, and then you've also got the Smithsonian Museums in Washington, D.C. And I lived out there for a while when I worked in Congress. And I just got to go whenever I wanted. And that was the best. Um, and then further out west, honestly, out west, the museums don't compare to the national parks. Right. So, like, we affectionately call it the office museums without walls. Um, but, yeah, I would honestly encourage you to go to Yellowstone, go to Redwood, go to Yosemite. Um, even the Columbia River Gorge north of Portland, Oregon is really good. Mount St. Helens. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Southern California, within our network, we've got the Creation Earth History Museum in San Diego. Um, there's the Christ for the Nations, a museum of earth history in Dallas, Texas. And then uh, Glendive, Montana, which is on the far eastern side of the state, almost on the border of North Dakota, is Glendive Dinosaur and Fossil Museum. So those are some of the uh, in-network locations that I've gotten to visit and really enjoy. Um, and there's also in Cleveland, there's a museum, Akron Fossils and Science Center. Um, there's a few in South Florida and just scattered across the country. And then most recently, actually, I went to Branson and visited the museum there. I know it's a big tourist hotspot in the Midwest. Um, so there's the Creation Experience Museum in Branson, but also just south of Branson in Northwest Arkansas, we have a theme park um, that has a petting zoo. Really? Um, it's got an art museum, a biblical history museum, and a Bible museum. Um, and there's hundreds of thousands of artifacts in that museum complex. Um, and then you can even go on a tour and see like a walk through Israel tour and they take you through different sites that they've recreated. And it's a, it's a fairly large theme park um, and it's a great deal. So if you're ever in the Branson area, definitely check out the great passion play in the theme park and the museum complex they have there. Okay. Awesome. I will actually link to all of those in the show notes. Okay. Um, so people can find those and not have to <laughs> write them all down. Yeah. Um, aquariums are another thing I mm. love. I love yes. ocean life. I think yeah. it is so amazing to look at it. What, what amazes me mm. about the ocean is that it hasn't been until recently. I mean, within the past, if I'm correct, within the past, maybe 15 years that we've actually discovered things further under the sea that, yeah. that we never knew existed. Right, right. And when you think about that, I mean, you know, our earth has been around for about 6,000 years. Those, that sea life, those creatures have been around for about 6,000 years since the beginning of creation. Yeah. God created all of that for his mm -hmm. glory. Yeah. And he's allowed us to see parts of his creation. But yeah. to think that there's another whole world of creation that, that we, you know, parts of it that we've never even seen and discovered, and we're just now still discovering yes. some of his creation. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just incredible to me. And so it, it's so neat. There's a, I, oh gosh, I have no idea what the name of this documentary is. I'll have to find it. Um, I'm not necessarily a proponent of um, uh, Johnny Depp, <laughs> but um, it's narrated by Johnny Depp and... I forget what the lady's name is, um, but it came out several years ago and it's amazing. It is not a Christian documentary, mm -hmm. but it's a documentary about the ocean and sea life. And it is just fantastic because yeah. you can watch that. I mean, just like looking at the universe, you can't, you can't watch that and say, eh, all these sea creatures just happened by chance. Right. Yeah. And like, that's the thing, like maybe like I live in Florida, so there's ocean everywhere, but maybe you live in the middle of the country and you can't right. get to the ocean easily, but you can watch a documentary. And you can use that in your home. Um, you know, we've got great resources in the network that are creation-based, um, but there's also some, like, you know, non-creation-based things that, while you're not going to agree with what they're saying, you can look at the pictures and you can talk about what they're, right. what they're looking at because you're looking at the same evidence. Yep. You know, you're just interpreting it differently. Um, and so that's, you know, something to always keep in mind is, like, same evidence, just different worldview. And also, like, aquariums, um, one of my favorites, obviously, the Georgia Aquarium is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then zoos are really cool, too. So San yep. Diego has a great zoo. Um, 
Miami has a good zoo, and then we've got two zoos in the network in Virginia and uh, in Kansas, which are really cool also, and those are, all from, those are both from a creation perspective. And then we're bringing online a few aquariums um, who, you know, we're kind of on the fence. They're like, well, you know, like, we are creationists, but there aren't many creationists out there, so we're probably not going to talk about it. And we are like, hey, like, there are a lot of us, so come on, let's yeah. run with this. And they're like, they're always encouraged. So. Yeah. So cool. So cool. Well, we'll we'll list all of those things in there. Talk about your app that you have. We have a couple more minutes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to hear about that. All right. So we've invested uh, some resources into developing an app for Apple iOS and Google Android. Um, So if you have an iOS or Android device, you can download it for free from your app store. Basically, it is a creation tour guide in the palm of your hand. So you can go to any natural history museum, any zoo, any aquarium, and you can get creation tour guide or creation tours um, guided from your phone. Uh, we also cover, I think it's the top 20 national parks. Um, and all that data is compiled from our partners at Master Books, Austin Science Media, Genesis Apologetics, Is Genesis History. They're all either members or partners of our association and we all just work together to collaborate and put all those things together. And there's even some Jonathan Park audio in there. Oh, um, cool. So it's not just like text you're reading, but you can watch short video clips while you're at the museum or maybe before when you're heading there. Um, and you can listen to audio. So it's a really great tool to use um, when you're at secular locations. And you can also find our in-network locations across the country um, and all of our events on that app as well. So... And then additionally, you can even request a live tour guide. So we've got tour guides actually um, at a lot of different locations across the country that give creation tours of secular locations. So those would be available to you. We're expanding that um, every month. There's new guides coming on, adding new communities um, to the network. Now, when you say live, do you mean actually live in person or live on the app? Live in person. Okay. Okay. So these are like docents? Yes. Uh, museums who, who are just, they're Christian creationists and they'll walk you around. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So they're oh, creationist yeah. Christians who okay. just have, you know, some time and they want to bless people. So you can go on the app and put where you're at and or where you're going. And if we have a guide that we can hook you up with, then we'll do that. Wow. That so, is awesome. Yeah. So cool. I would much rather somebody guide me through a museum <laughs> and, uh, Walk us through. That's really, really cool. Real quickly, you, you said you mentioned is Genesis history. Um, yeah. That's a fantastic documentary on yeah. creation. Do you, and I know I'm kind of springing this on you. Um, are there some documentaries that you can recommend uh, that are just excellent Christian documentaries that you like? Yeah, definitely. So um, of course, is Genesis history is amazing. Um, Riot and the Dance is also really good. Okay. And then Awesome Science Media has a lot of good documentaries. They've got um, a whole lineup of different topics that they cover. Um, so those are my, personally, my three like, go-to places. Okay. I want to watch like creation-based documentaries. Okay, awesome. Well, we will link back to those in the, the notes as well. And then also, if you have some 3D glasses, uh, Genesis Paradise Lost in 3D um, is another great one. And it like takes you through what it might've looked like in the beginning. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm writing these down. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I'll have to go back and listen <laughs> um, to get them all. So we'll, we'll link back to those. Um, anyway, this has been so encouraging and, and so informative. Um, I, like I said, we love museums. We love just being out in God's creation, um, because it is one of the greatest benefits of homeschooling. I know that schools, you know, they'll load kids up on a bus and then they go to the museum or the zoo or something and they'll be there for a few hours and they kind of run through. Um, but the, the difference is, is that they don't have a mom or dad or, or um, you know, a guardian who's with them pointing out specific things to them saying, you know, one-on-one, look at this, look at how God created the human body. Look at how God created this animal. Look at how God created, you know, this galaxy. Mm-hmm. It's you're, they're being kind of moved around and, and shuffled through a big group of kids when they go on a field trip. But when you've got that one-on-one time with your kids and you can really take your time and walk through a museum and get to see the glory of God's creation, it's yeah. just 
amazing. It is one of the greatest parts of homeschooling. And like you said, I mean, you can do it in your backyard. You don't have to go to a museum. You can do it in your local library. You can go and find all kinds of books on God's creation and, um, and just get to draw our kids closer to their creator. So, um, so we are out of time for the podcast. We are going to continue this conversation for those who are on the backstage pass, um, membership site. We're going to actually stay on with Stephen for another, um, few minutes and we're going to talk about national homeschool day. And that's an exciting thing for us. We're going to talk about how you as homeschoolers can be involved in that and the importance of us working together as a community and how that can just have a great impact in our culture. So um, if you're a Backstage Pass member, stick around on the video. For those listening to the podcast, thank you for taking time to listen today. You guys are a huge blessing. And again, if you have topic suggestions for us or guest suggestions or questions that you want answered on the podcast, um, send those in. You can send this to us either on Facebook through the Schoolhouse Rocked Facebook page, or you can email us at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. And let us know how we can serve you. How can we bless you? How can we encourage you? And if you are not a Backstage Pass member, um, please consider um, taking a look at that. Every membership that comes in, it's only $4.99 a month. And for every membership that we get, and it's actually less if you sign up for a yearly or um, lifetime membership, but every dollar that goes to the Backstage Pass membership site goes straight to production on the documentary. So you're getting just amazing video and encouragement and backstage access to the movie and videos um, like this from the podcast, but you are also helping to support the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked and production on the movie. So we would absolutely love it if you would check that out. We've got several free videos that you can check out on there. We actually just put one up recently with Abby Ranella, and that one is um, just excellent. I mean, so, so encouraging. So that one is free that you can just go and watch that, and that will give you a little bit of an idea of what the Backstage Pass membership site is because there's a whole lot more of that type of thing on there. So anyway, thanks again. Thank you, Stephen. Tell us again where people can find you. Yeah, you can find us online at learncreation.org. And the app on the App Store, you would want to search The Creation Trail. You can download that for free. So okay. and a plug for the Backstage Pass, like I'm a member and I love it. So if you're not a member yet, like join me and we can learn so much more about homeschooling. So cool. Thank you so much, Stephen. And uh, thank you guys. Have a great day. Yeah. Okay. And I can provide you all those links. So oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be great. You know, yes. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to write really quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going through, but um, okay. So for backstage past members, um, thank you for hanging with us. I love that you guys join us on these videos and get to just see um, video in action and what our days look like here at the Schoolhouse Rocked headquarters. <laughs> um, so, Stephen, let's talk about National Homeschool Day, because that yeah. is something that I know is um, near and dear to your heart. You are a big part of that. Um, take us kind of from the beginning, if you can, of what National Homeschool Day is, and then let's talk through that and see how the homeschool community can be involved. Yeah, definitely. Sure. So, um, National Homeschool Day is a event that was coordinated uh, by our team at the International Association for Creation. So, you know, we focus on creation, but like our heart really is homeschooling. And so we're like, how are we going to bless homeschoolers? And we thought, well, why not just have a national homeschool day? Um, And that was last year. And so since then, like God has opened up all the right doors. Um, So we're partnered with, you know, like over half of the state homeschool associations across America um, to put National Homeschool Day on. And lots of families and co-ops and local churches are getting on board. And it's just really exciting um, to see the unity that is happening in our community. And we know that like true unity only comes through Christ. And so we just are like always thanking Jesus. Like, yes, like this is your heart, God. And we get to see it in action on the earth. And it's just such a blessing to be part of that. So the reason that, um, you know, we started National Homeschool Day was so that we could celebrate faith and family with our faith family uh, across the country. And we're just excited that whether you stream it from home or you stream it at your local church or co-op or even online for your group, like, we're just excited to share with you 
um, the wisdom and the encouragement that has been given to us by God through the years of our speakers, uh, you know, who have been homeschooling. So all of our speakers are homeschool moms and dads, and uh, some of them are have been in a little longer than others, but everyone is successful at it. And I all I know all of them personally, and I can attest that they're the real deal. Um, and so we've got Israel Wayne from Family Renewal LLC, uh, Dr. Lena Callantine from Psy Experience, and both of them are with Master Books. They're published authors there with Master Books. Um, we've got Sherry Seligson with Apologia, and Meredith Curtis with Powerline Productions Publishing. And then from our own team, we pulled in Kyle Justice with Awesome Science Media and Barb Hecke with Grandparents of Homeschooling, and she'll be joined with her husband, Rich. So it's a great lineup. You're not going to want to miss it. And we've got something for everyone from knowing how to teach history with Genesis to the biblical worldview to focusing on your child's heart uh, to maybe starting out as a new mom or a new dad homeschooling. Um, you know, we're trying to get a good cross section and make sure we're covering a, a wide variety of topics for everyone. And the good thing is they're all pre-recorded. So there's no like really set schedule. Um, if you're signing up to watch them, you can watch them at your own leisure throughout the 24 hour period of February 23rd. Um, and we would just love for you to join us and take advantage of that free resource that we want to offer to you. And um, that would in hopes bless you and encourage you and let you know that you can finish well and like you can start strong and like God is in this with you. So, so, so it's an online conference. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now is, um, cause there's a national national homeschool day. Um, is when, when is it? February 23rd. February 23rd. Okay. So yes. the conference actually will Saturday. come that day. It will be on February 23rd. Yes. It's a Saturday. So there is a, an offline component. Okay. Um, so there's about 10 of our museums that are participating in various major metro areas across the country. So like Cleveland, Ohio, Portland, Oregon, um, okay. places like that. And even in Canada, um, which is exciting. And so you can, if you live nearby one of those locations, those museums will be opening up the doors um, for that day to welcome in homeschool leaders and learners so that they can learn you know, about their local creation science resources and how to use creation hands-on um, during that day. So okay. whether you watch online or you come to one of our locations offline, um, I'm sure you'll be blessed by it. And you'll meet a lot of other like-minded homeschoolers. Like that's the best part when we are able to build a community together and learn from each other. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, what is the website for that? Is it nationalhomeschoolday.com? It is, yep, nationalhomeschoolday.com, <laughs> all one word. Okay. Very cool. Well, and yeah, so there you can like learn about our speakers. Um, you can register your location for free um, and check out like our sponsors, you know, so a few of our sponsors are master books, homeschool dead media, and even schoolhouse rocks. So we're just so blessed that like the community has come together and we're able to all do this. Like this isn't our event, like this is God's event and he's just inviting all of us to be part of it. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, talk, you mentioned homeschool dad media, and that's a new yeah. thing that you are kicking off, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. talk about that. Cause I, okay. love this and, and maybe a little biased because my husband is actually part of this. Garrett is, um, on that team. So talk, talk about what, um, yeah. homeschool dad media is and why you've created this. Oh, wow. Okay. So back a few years ago, uh, my friend Zach and I, like we were at the Finnish World Conference and speakers and Israel Wayne was the keynote for that year. And we met Israel and we're like, oh my gosh, like there's more dads like us, you know? And um, we were just so blessed by Israel and it really like changed our perspective on homeschooling. And so after praying about like, what does God want us to do with that like divine connection? Um, you know, like something he sorted out for us. And we were talking to Israel and did some research and we found like there were a ton of awesome homeschool mom, like mm -hmm. blog networks and websites and all these awesome things for moms, but there literally was nothing for dads. Like there were good blogs, but there was no like hub, central hub for homeschool dads. And so we got with Israel and we're like, Hey, like, you know, why don't we start praying about this? So we've prayed about it for the past like three years on and off. Mm -hmm. um, and in the past month, 
God just, again, opened all the right doors, and we've been walking through them in faith. Um, so right now we're up to nine contributors um, at HDM, Homeschool Dime Media. So basically, again, it's just a hub for dads to go and find blogs and podcasts, um, books, events from other homeschool dads just like you, and to be encouraged. Um, and we want to help connect the homeschool dad community, uh, both online and offline. So there's a few different things we're doing to help move that along. Uh, but we've got so far, if my memory serves me correctly, Israel Wayne, uh, Michael Curtis, Zach Nolet, Matt Adams, Garrett Hampton, your husband, which is awesome. <laughs> um, Pat Roy, Kyle Justice, Will Addison, and a few others who are considering joining at this time. So, um, you know, maybe you're a homeschool dad blogger and you need encouragement, or maybe you're just starting out, mm -hmm. um, or maybe you're going through the teen years and you're like, how do I like win my child's heart back? And like, that's questions we all ask ourselves. And all these dads have been through that. And they just want to be able to pour into you and to share with you, you know, the truth of God's word. Um, so, oh, and I, so sorry, Paul Bass is also, um, he rounds out the eight um, or however many we have now. And it's just exciting because like, while it's a small group of us, you know, that are tight knit and, you know, we all know each other, uh, we're able to just, reach out and encourage other dads who are asking questions. You know, like when I go to homeschool conferences, it usually is like all the moms are there and the dads come along and the moms are really excited and the dads have a lot of questions. And like, I can understand that. Like being a man, like sometimes it's like, all right, like what's going on here? You kind of can get lost in the sea of like excitement. Mm -hmm. um, but like trust us, you know, and really no, trust God. But like, you know, God working through us that you would be encouraged and equipped and connected to, you know, start well and finish well and all these great things like that God has planned for you and your family as you lead them in the home. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. Um, one of my very favorite parts, and I've shared this a few times, but um, one of my very favorite parts of Schoolhouse Rocked, of the filming that we've done is we have interviewed several dads. Yeah. And we, we've talked with dads who are pastors, truck drivers, public school teachers. Um, I mean, we just have a variety of different dads who do different things, yeah. but they're all Christian men who are working to lead their families the best that they can. Right. And I love it because dads are, they play such a very important role in homeschooling. And I think oftentimes they don't realize how important their role is. You know, they think mm -hmm. they go to work, they provide for their families, they provide for their wife to be able to stay home. And yes, that is so important and praise God for that. But their encouragement and their support of homeschooling to their mm -hmm. wives is yeah. hands down one of the most important things that mom needs in a day. Yeah, exactly. She needs her husband to just come alongside of her and encourage her and hold her up and just give her that boost of you're doing a good job. You're right. doing great. You're a great mom. You're a great teacher. How can I help you? That's another thing. You know, if dads mm -hmm. would just ask yeah. that question yes. every now and then, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. How can I come alongside of you? And it might be that mom just needs him to just do the dishes at night after right. dinner so she can get the kids bathed in in bed. And I know a yeah. lot of dads do these things already. Yeah. Um, there are so many know, awesome dads out there. There are so many awesome dads, um, but oftentimes dads feel like, well, you know, I've been at work all day. I just want to come home and I want to relax. Mm -hmm. Well, mom's been at work all day too. Right. <laughs> and her day right. doesn't end. Usually yes. it doesn't end ever because once she goes to bed, she's got little ones coming into her room and waking yeah. her up and, right. you know, having scary dreams or they have a yeah. stomach ache or, you know, right. whatever the case might be. Yeah. Um, and we need dads to step up. And yeah take that role of leadership mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, physically yep. dads are so important and yes. so much appreciated. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if you have a husband who is like that, by all means, let him know how much he's appreciated. Let him know what, um, what an amazing job he's doing of supporting you. Mm -hmm. And if he's not doing that, um, pray, pray that he yes. will step up and yeah. become that, that, 
um, that leader that you need him to be and that encourager. We've done several re- really great podcasts. Um, actually, Israel Wayne was mm-hmm. uh, had him on the podcast a while ago. Davis Carmen talks about that. Okay. Scott LaPierre, those three are just fantastic. Cool. Uh, Brian Osborne, mm-hmm. and they all talk about the importance of spiritual yeah. leadership in their home. And yeah. one of the greatest things that I think Scott LaPierre was the one who said it was he was like, you know, if you think you can't lead your family spiritually, if you can read, you can lead your family spiritually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And like, like, read the Bible to them. Right, exactly. And honestly, like, you know, sometimes you can mention like leading your family, and it seems like a nebulous concept because it's like, well, I am leading my family because like I'm bringing in like money so that my wife can teach my kids and like this how this roof that's over their head it's like because you're working a job you know and you're putting in a lot of hours um but a really practical you know thing to do is to disciple your kids Mm -hmm. and it's just so important like being intentional with your children um and seeing them be able to walk in god's ways because you're walking in god's Mm -hmm. ways and uh, you know, we can look at like Paul and Timothy and the Bible, and of course they weren't related by blood. Well, they were related by Christ's blood, but um, you know, Paul and Timothy were close because Paul discipled Timothy, and Timothy even like wanted to disciple others because of what Paul had done in his life. And so this isn't just like addition; this is multiplication. And like at the end of the day, like that's why discipleship is so important, is because the church starts in the home and yep. you know, like that's where it spreads. Like the gospel spreads when it starts in the home. And yes, it's so important to get plugged into a sound, like solid local church and have that community and that fellowship. But we also can't forget the community and fellowship in our own homes. Yeah. And so, you know, if there's an encouragement I can give to dads. Um, and like I said, like I'm a homeschool dad in training, so I don't have super personal experience, but I've seen this work time and time again that like take that time out of your day and like pour into your kids. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're here like Stephen, like I don't have anything to pour in. Or maybe you're a mom and saying like, my husband is dry. And like, if that's the case, then like go to God and like cry out to God and ask him to fill you up so that you can be poured out because that's God's heart. Like God's heart is for you to be his child and for him to be the perfect father through you that honestly you can't be. Like, none of us can be perfect dads or perfect moms, but God, like, enables us by his power and his wisdom to do these things that, like, we wouldn't be able to do on our own. And, uh, you know, that's the foundation of homeschooling is, like, God. Yeah. Um, and his, his, like, life in us and through us. Um, so just, you know, all of us at Homeschool Dad Media, like, we really want to be there to encourage you. And so um, if you are a dad, you can go to homeschooldadmedia.com and you can find out more about our contributors, more about – you know, what we offer for parents. Um, and maybe you're a mom and you're like, all right, well, what does HTM have for me? And so we just want to encourage you, like, talk to it about your husband or talk with your husband about it. Mm-hmm. I would encourage him to go visit the site and let him know that there are people just like him who have been through the struggles and fought the fights and are on the other side and we're winning. And, you know, he can win too. Um, so that's what we really want to encourage dads with is that victory is found in Christ and that Christ is found in us. So we have that victory. I love it. Um, what really quickly, cause I just want to be clear, what is it on homeschool dad media um, or HDM as you call it? <laughs> because we know the whole homeschool world is um, founded on acronyms. <laughs> yes. um, what, what is it that you're offering? Do you have blogs? Do you have a podcast? I know you're just getting this rolling. So I yeah. should say, you know, what are the plans? Are you, are you doing right. blogs, podcasts, videos? What, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, so we're a hub for all of our contributors, blogs, podcasts, uh, radio interviews, events. So okay. you can go to our website, and then we link out to all of our contributors. Gotcha. Okay. And these are just guys who are trusted and verified, and so you can know with confidence that like what you're getting from them is okay. tried and true. Um, and then we also got HTM Live on Facebook, so we go live sometimes to talk about different topics for like two to five minutes just to encourage dads. There's the HGM community also on Facebook okay. where you can join in and just encourage one another and um, get periodic updates. Um, longer term, we're looking to hopefully do an HGM conference um, just for dads. So homeschool conference just for dads. Yeah. And, uh, and then also HGM box, uh, which 
will be a subscription box service for homeschool dads and it will include uh, you know box content from our contributors and that also comes with a plethora of digital resources as well so we want to like get you plugged in help you stay encouraged um, and give you a sense of community with dads who understand where you're at and where you're going cool. um, and it's it's a great time to be in the kingdom of God and see what he's doing in our hearts and in our lives and we can't wait for you to join us and uh, you know, lead this charge into homeschooling and discipling our families and seeing the world change for Jesus. Yes, I love it so much. Um, well, thank you, Stephen, for your time today. You've been such a blessing and a joy to talk to you. I'm so grateful for all that you are doing and for answering the call that God has put upon you to lead this um, creation ministry that you have, to lead the um, Homeschool Dads Media, and um, you're doing big things for a young guy. And um, it's, it's what life is all about. We tell our girls all the time, God created you on purpose for a purpose. Yes. He has a purpose for every one of us in this yep. life. And that is to glorify him and enjoy him forever and to have a great Amen. impact in his kingdom. Yes. And if, if we're not doing that, then we need to rethink what it is that, that we're doing with our lives. And, yes. uh, you know, those mamas out there who are whispering prayers to their babies while they're changing diapers and those um, like yourself who are just um, leading great ministries like this, um, God is using in a big way if we're just willing to take that step of obedience. So thank you for what you're doing. Yes. Well, thank you also, Yvette. It's so encouraging to be your friend and uh, work with you guys at Schoolhouse Rocked. And, uh, you know, as you guys say, like the homeschool revolution, you know, it's started, it's not coming, it's here yeah. and we're part of it. So yes. we're so excited that all of the listeners are able to join in that and be part of what God's doing across the earth. Yeah. Thank you. Well, have an awesome rest of your day and um, we will talk again soon. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. God bless. God bless you.